Good morning. I just want to take a few moments here um, this Sunday morning uh, in the middle of August to just reflect on the greatness of God. And because He is so great, He is greatly to be praised. And we come down as the summer starts to wind down. We've enjoyed being outside. It doesn't matter what kind of activity you, you pick or what kind of activity you like. Some people like to walk, some people like to hike, some people like to fish, some people like to bike, some people like to be on motorcycles, some people just like to just have an evening around a campfire. But there's something quite uh, wonderful about being outside. There's something quite spectacular about this, the scenery or the day or the moment or the event. And uh, we all take delight in it, as we should. And it was created... The world was created to give us joy, and it was good. God created the world, and he said it was good. He was, he was happy with what he created, the complexity and the, and the beauty and the, and the changes and the seasons and all of that wrapped together to make a, to make a glorious package of, uh, of uh, wonderful things for our senses to see and feel and sense. And of just for us to take back and enjoy and, and, and just find, a, find, a, find moments of, of satisfaction in that. But greater is that we would give back our thanks and our praise to God. As we look at the world around us, the first thing we have to do is appreciate it. You know, people get busy and they just don't cease things. I was hearing about, I, I was reading about a, uh, account where um, John Adams' son uh, was reflecting on his life, and um, he was he wrote in his diary something about like he took his his son, which would be John Adams' grandson, fishing, and he said, "What a waste of a day!" And yet, an author had kind of gleaned through some of the materials and had had found a, 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 the the description of the same day by his son, and it said went fishing with my father the greatest day of my life what was difference in the day what was the difference in the day except the appreciation one appreciated being with his father and doing something with him and being outside who knows the nuances of that as we look around our world the first thing that we must look at or 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 sense is that we must appreciate that God gave us this beautiful day, this wonderful season of summer, this time to be outside, this time to enjoy what he has given us. You know, it said um, what they're finding is, is, is very interesting. They're finding as we're outside, something happens that's different than inside. It's something about the oxygen, something about the peace, something about the tranquility that transcends into us. And they're finding that um, people have a healing outside, and we've known that. Why do you think there's uh, camps and, and things like this and retreats? Why do we go off to be in nature? Something happens in our soul. There's something that satisfies us in our soul in that way. Uh, Paul talks about it this way. There's something that's hidden in this. Paul says that grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the riches of Christ and make all people see that there's a fellowship in this mystery from the beginning of the ages which has been hidden in God who created all things through Christ Jesus. You see, Christ Jesus not only is our Savior, but he is our creator of all things. And there must be beyond appreciation you must find a delight. You must find a delight. You know, um, Psalm 42 says this. It says that the deer pants for the flowing stream. So my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for you, for the living God. You see, there's a deepness, I believe, in the created world and in experiencing the outside because it connects us to our living God. Because we're looking at living things, because we're experiencing the life around us, when, which in any 
way we see life, whether it's a caterpillar crawling, a butterfly flying, a, a leaf falling, a flower blooming, all of these things talk to us and speak to us of a living God. Our God is alive. He is alive. And in that, in his life, glory comes to him. As we see the, the, the heavens at night, we understand that our God is, is, is huge. There's an awe to that. As we see the, the forest burst forth in, in, its, in, its, in its sounds, we find a joy in that. All nature glorifies God. So the first thing we appreciate what God has given to us as a gift in creating this world and making it so beautiful. Secondly, we delight in that. We delight in that. In, and in that delight, there's an element of taking us to praise. There's something that takes us to praise. You know, summer is in full bloom. The color is exploding all around us in the gardens, in the, in the evenings, in the skies, it's full. The days are longer. We get, we seem to get so much more to do, whether it be work, whether it be just the experience of the light or just even our leisure. There's a warmth to it. There's family times, there's, there's good times. The summer is busy and yet there's a lot of enjoyment. But something is happening through the summer. There's a growth. So I would talk, to, I would ask of you, this summer, have you been growing in God? Have you been filling yourself up with Him amidst all that's happening in, our, in the world? Have you been pulling in the nutrients that He would give you? In these warm summer days, stop your busyness for a moment and draw in the life that the Creator is giving us, both in sensing Him in the beauty and sensing Jesus Christ as your Savior. You know, um, through the summer is when the growth comes. In the winter, not so much in nature, it's resting. In our own lives, there's something that happens in the nourishment in our relationship with God that can sustain us through some of the harshness of things that are on the horizon or things that we can't even anticipate, but might be there. Enjoy, enjoyment. If first we must appreciate, secondly we must, we must delight in it, third we must enjoy it. It's not about where we worship, it's about who we worship. Our worship is not about a where or a what, but it's about a who. It's about Him. It's about His greatness. I've stood in glorious cathedrals all around the world and seen the light shining through the glass. I've sat in humble prairie churches that have simple windows that let in the sunlight. I've walked in dark and desperate places with people, clinging only to the Savior who I know. Believers have worshiped in beautiful places Believers, even today, are worshiping in horrible places that we cannot even imagine. In all those places, what has mattered is that the Savior was with the people worshiping, that their faith was deepened as they worshiped their Savior. The body of Christ all around the world meets in all these places but the delight is in the person who we know the God who is alive who created the earth 
who brings us joy, delight in all that we do because we know Him. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I would say to you in this summer season, enjoy it. Fill it up with everything that summer brings. And then sit back for a moment and be thankful and prayerful about the God who loves you, who gave you all this, and who also gave you his son, that you might have life. Summer is partly the abundant life, but the abundant life is filled up by knowing Jesus Christ and having him as your Lord and Savior and trusting in him and walking with him in all that you face and do. From Psalm 65, I just want to end with a passage out of the Passion Bible. And just listen. You answer my prayers with amazing wonders, with awe-inspiring awe inspiring displays of power. You are a righteous God who helps us like our Father. Everyone everywhere looks to you, for you are the confidence of all the earth. What jaw-dropping, astounding power is yours. You are a mountain maker, and you set them all in place. O oh God, to the furthest corners of the planet, people stand in awe of you, startled and stunned by your signs and wonders. The sunrises that are brilliant in the beauty of the sunset, they take turns singing your, their songs of joy to you. Every field is watered with an abundance of rain, showers soaking the earth and softening the clods of dirt, causing seeds to sprout throughout the land. You crown the earth with earthly harvests and the fruit of your goodness. Wherever you go, the tracks of the chariot wheels drip with oil. Green pastures boast of your bounty, and every, hop, every hillside blossoms with your joy. The grazing meadows, the grazing meadows are covered with flocks, and the fertile valleys are clothed with grain. Each one is shouting and dancing for joy, creation, celebration. They're all singing their songs of praise to you. Appreciate what God has done. Enjoy all that He has given and give thanks to him. For he has delighted in you. Delight in him.